A chain-link fence barred the entrance to the docks. There was a glow of light at the window of the hut. It was a mean-looking guard dog. Hi, good morning. Do you know what time it is? No, I don't wear a watch. As my dad used to say, I'm not into time, man. Well, you're too early. What time is it, anyhow? The big hand's on the floor. Why aren't you in bed? I can explain everything. Never mind, I ain't that interested. What time do you open the gates? Seven. Do you mind if I hang out here till the docks open? Please yourself, but you'll have a long wait. It's Sunday, and tomorrow is the start of the national holiday. Everything is closed for a month. Well, wouldn't you just know it? Does that dog belong to you? Nah, he comes with the job. I just feed him every now and then. More then than now, I'd say. What's the dog's name? Twenty. It's unusual for a dog. It's his registration number. Security dog number 20. That animal doesn't seem too hot for a guard dog. No, you haven't seen him in action. It doesn't look like he has the energy to wag his tail. Just like my wife. She's like a slug in a coma until she's annoyed. Then, she's like a tiger with a rat up its ass. Sweet. Ever heard of Condor Transglobal? Sure. They have a warehouse here. Well, could I take a look? Not until after the holidays. Come back in a month. I have to make a delivery to Condor Transglobal. Where's your rig? Uh, about half a mile down the road. And you walked here? Jeez. Are you some kind of nut? Nah, it was easy. I just put one foot in front of the other. Are you gonna let me make my delivery? Not without the paperwork. You get the papers, you make your delivery, and I get a fat backhander. I was getting nowhere with the story about being a trucker. Do you know what kind of business Condor's involved in? I'm paid to guard the gate. Their business is none of mine. I'm looking for a young woman. At the docks? What kind of woman do you have in mind? You don't understand. It's my girlfriend I'm trying to find. Well, I ain't seen her. And you should tell her, the docks ain't no place for a young lady. They're dirty and they're dangerous. I'm certain my girlfriend was brought here when she was abducted. What? Your girl was kidnapped? Yeah. Struck down by an Indian with a poison dart. A poison dart, huh? I could tell he didn't believe me. I have these very exotic panties. Take them away, you pervert! Have you ever heard of Professor Ubier? Me? None of my friends are professors or anything like that. What's cooking? Beans. You know a man can live on nothing but beans. Not this one. Don't you ever get tired of eating beans? Sure I do. What do you take me for? And what's the alternative? Peas. I can't eat them too often, though. They play hell with my digestion. Have you ever considered changing your diet? What's wrong with beans and beer? You need me to tell you? You're pumping out enough methane here to fill a dirigible. This is the dart that the Indian shot at my girlfriend. Sheesh! That's pretty weird, but I don't see why you'd expect to find her here. Take a look at this letter. That's sick. Did you write it? Oh, no. No, it's a letter from my girlfriend's admirer. If I was you, I'd smack him in the mouth. Well, that's not my style, but thanks for the advice. I gotta go now, but I'll be back. Can't wait. The chimney was a metal pipe with a conical hat on top to stop the rain getting in. Hey, 20.
What's the big idea? I don't know. The dog went berserk for no apparent reason. He's trained to do that. The idea is to deter any would-be intruder. Oh, I get it. Okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. Just remember, he's a trained attack dog. A killer. A short stick of wood floated near the edge of the landing stage. The stick had a hook on one end. I figured it was a boat hook for hooking boats. It was a short wooden handled boat hook. The bottle was just out of reach. Nothing was going to get me into that water if I could help it. I just knew that boat hook would be useful for something. As for the bottle, even if I couldn't find a use for it, I'd cleaned up the dock a little. I couldn't reach the packet. I couldn't reach the cup. I couldn't reach the bucket. Ouch! That's hot! The bottle was half filled with water. Maybe it would cool the cone down enough to touch it. Now I could see into the pipe which formed the chimney. It was the metal cone I had taken from the chimney of the watchman's hut. Hmm. The bottle had blocked the chimney, and the hut was filling up with smoke. The packet was full of dog biscuits. Someone had once told me a piece of coal brought you luck. Who was I to argue with irrational superstition? That mug was a health risk. I decided to leave it where it was. Baked beans in ketchup. Hey, 20. Come and get it, boy. I felt a slight twinge of conscience as I prepared to give the dog a dunking. It soon passed. As I'd expected, the dog could swim like a, well, like a dog.
The sign looked as if it was firmly attached to the wall. Anyway, I didn't really want it as a souvenir. This sign also looked firmly attached to the wall. It read, Condor Transglobal. I'd come to the right place. Now all I had to do was get inside. The din must have drowned out the sound of my knocking. Maybe there was a way in up there. The metal housing prevented me from getting to the fan. It was the creep who kidnapped Nico, and I had a score to settle. The guy was partly hidden behind a stack of crates. It was a powerful fan. I couldn't reach the blades of the fan, which was just as well. If I'd stuck my fingers in there, I'd never be able to play guitar again. That did the trick. The fan clunked and shorted out as its blades were mashed by the boat hook. Hey, you make any more noise, I break your arms. That bully needed to be taught a lesson. Garzak's already mad because we didn't get the stone. You give me any trouble, I'll tell him it was all your fault. Karzak? That must be his boss. The window was jammed shut. Who is it? Is this Condor Transglobal? Nobody here. Go away. I'll give you five seconds to let me in or I'll bust down the door. Okay. I'm coming. He didn't sound too happy. It was an old, creaky... Among the paperwork which adorned the notice board 
was something which caught my eye. It was a delivery note from Condor Transglobal, and the address was Coromonte City. It was Ubier's. There was nothing else of any. In The only interesting thing I found was a small brass key. It was a small... Whoa! Don't shoot! The little guy had a blowpipe. That confirmed my suspicions about what had happened to Nico. I waited for him to shoot me, but it didn't happen. Instead, he seemed to want to tell me something. Uh, what? What do you want? Uh, uh, he seemed excited, almost desperate. What did he want so bad? Hi. Uh, I'm not going to hurt you. Cuaramonte. Is that where you're from? Cuaramonte City? Cuaramonte! Uh, Cuaramonte! Okay, okay. What does this key unlock? Huh? Hey, you're manacled. Who did this? That big thug? I'm gonna set you free, okay? Hey, come back here. The little guy had gone to ground amongst the stack of crates. Just in time. Interrupting the beam of light kept the doors from closing and stopped anyone from using the elevator. But what now? There. That would keep the doors from closing. An unmarked switch tempting. I noticed a faint mark on the wooden floor. There was an arc-shaped scratch on the floor, as if a door had been opened in the nearby wall. My fingers traced the outline of a secret door in the wall. Then I found a small round stud, which was set flush to the surrounding wooden paneling. Just as I'd hoped, a secret room. Nico! There. How are you feeling? Oh, thanks, Georges. How on earth did you find me? I knew Oubier had been in Marseille. But never mind about me. How about you tell me exactly what's going on, starting with that Mayan stone? I picked it up from one of Cossack's men in Paris. I was expecting a consignment of narcotics. Drugs? Yes. The proof I needed to expose Cossack's smuggling operation. I'd set it up to act as his courier, and once I had the proof, I planned to go straight to Inspector Mou. But instead of the dope I'd expected, 
They send me that stone instead. And to find out more, I called Professor Oubier who invited me to his mansion. At least, I thought it was Oubier. I don't get it. If Karzak's business is drugs, why is he so desperate to get his hands on that stone? Maybe it has some significance to the local people in Central America. It could be Karzak's means of getting them to work for him. Anyway, we've got to get out of here. Nico, wait! It was the masking tape that had been used on Nico. I decided to keep the masking tape. It was bound to be of some use to me. It was a grotesque little statue of a figure carrying a shield and a spear. We can't use the elevator. If that thug Pablo is recovered, he'll be waiting for us. We've got to do something. Where does that door lead to? I'm not sure. Okay, tell me what you know about Condor. Condor Trans Global exports Aztec and Mayan relics from Central America to Europe. But that's just a cover for the real business. Drug smuggling. What proof do you have? Nothing yet. Do you know where Condor is based? In Central America. A place called Cuaramonte. I saw that name on a docket downstairs. Tell me about this Karzak guy. Well, I saw him for only a few minutes. But he frightens me. I got the impression that Pablo was nervous when he was around too. His eyes. They're like a wild animal's. Like a tiger. That's what scared me most about him. He looked so unpredictable and dangerous. Did you know Oubier's wife was a film star? No. I didn't know he was married. What happened to her? She died. In mysterious circumstances, apparently. How mysterious? I heard she was murdered. Possibly by Oubier himself. A murderer, huh? André said he was something of a celebrity. Did I hear you refer to Inspector Moo? Yes. You remember him? Well, of course I do. But I thought he was dead. Oh, no. He reappeared after the broken sword case had blown over. When he found out who was in with the Neo Templars, he went into hiding. Moo knew more than was good for him. Does he know about our involvement with the case? If he does, he's not telling. Still, he got a sudden promotion. Did that Indian guy mistreat you? If you forget about the abduction, verbal threats and bondage, no. Well, what about the little guy? I don't think he knows where he is or what he's doing here. The big guy, Pablo, he brought Titipoco from the jungle. Titi what? Titipoco. That's what I heard Pablo call the dwarf. Do you recognize this? Is that the dart which knocked me out? That's right. I kept it as a souvenir. Have you any idea who this little statue is supposed to be? I'm not very well acquainted with my deities, Georges. But whatever his name, he sure is ugly. I found these in your bag. Oh, they were a gift. I know, I read the note. God knows what was going through Andre's mind. I think that's quite plain enough. Look, the little guy downstairs was chained up with these. That must have been Pablo's doing. I don't blame him though. That little guy is dangerous. You're still sore about that poison dart? Of course I'm sore. The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. There wasn't enough room to move the handle. I was wrestling with the small crate when I noticed the label on its side. Danger. Live contents do not drop.
Hopefully, the tape would prevent those doors from closing and stop the Indian from being able to call the elevator. It rose about six inches off the floor, and I said a silent prayer to whoever had discovered the power of hydraulics. What on earth are you doing? Trying to raise the statue so I can hook it to that pulley. Is that really going to help us? I like to keep myself occupied in times of stress. It would be much easier to attach the The statue looked way too heavy for me to move. It was too heavy for me to move on my own. Could you give me a hand to push this statue? What for? This, my dear, is our passport to freedom. If you say so, dear. Okay, push! <sighs> Great teamwork. Nice to be working with you again, Mr. Stobart. I thought about hanging from the cable with my bare hands, but it was too far to the other end of the cable to escape that way. Nico, I have a great idea. George, where have you been? Never mind that. Do you have the Mayan stone? Maybe I have, but... Uh... Don't argue, André. Give the stone to George. Well, of course. If you say so, Nicole. Thank you so much, André. George, he told me you'd been kidnapped, my dear. I'm glad to see he was mistaken. Oh, but it was true. If it hadn't been for George... I wouldn't be here now. That's not finished yet. Karzak's thugs will be back for that stone, you can bet. The best lead that we have is Coromonte City. Coromonte? It's in Central America. That's where Ubier gets his artifacts. That's all we needed to know. Come on, Georges. Coromonte, the traveler's rear entrance to Central America. Well, that's how it was translated in the brochure. We didn't know what we were looking for, but the offices of Condor Transglobal seemed a good place to start. Hey, it's market day. I don't see any cabs. Let's ask someone how to get to Cuaramonte City. Okay. Keep your eyes peeled for any sign of Condor Transglobal. <laughs> 